Okay guys, this is a coaching session for the support of Mazaha, which is in Silver 2 on EU West. Right from the get-go, I'll say that the Mazaha support is completely off meta, and I'm personally am intrigued a little bit on how this person plays Mazaha. I'm not too keen on it, but but we'll see. Um, in terms of climbing ELO, Mazaha support is probably something I wouldn't recommend, especially when you get higher. But we'll see, we'll see as, as the game goes on. You're into Misfortune, Morgana. Morgana has Exhaust and you're with an Ezreal. So you have some okay lane poke there, but I think in the long run during the laning phase, the, Mas uh, sorry, the Misfortune and the Morgana are going to be generally a lot stronger. Especially their level 6s are probably in theory a lot better as well. Um, the Misfortune Q poke should be a lot stronger than the, the Ezreal because the Ezreal is going to have to get tier. So when the Ezra has tier, he's generally a lot weaker in, uh, in the uh, in laning phase, as it already is. Um, and also, if anyone gets caught by a binding here from Misfort uh, from the Morgana, the Misfortune is going to be able to have a nice Q setup, if possible. And at the very least, it's going to be uh, Bullet Rain, her E, is going to be coming down. And that's going to do a fair amount of damage as well. Yeah, I'm intrigued to see how this, how this is going to pan out. Um, at, at the very least, we can at least focus on your macro style. See how your macro is. But um, I think Mouse Saha support is... It's going to be tricky. Okay, normal start. Wait, hold on. I don't think there's anything you can do here. I think the he at least get binded straight away. Yeah. Seems like you're AFK as well and your Mazahar as well. Very slow to react here. Yeah, seems like you're AFK as well. Try not to be AFK level 1, guys. Okay, this is a really brutal level 1. Really, really brutal level 1 for your team. Uh, the plus side is that the enemy did use quite a lot of summoners early, including M MF Flash and Morgana Exhaust. Uh, your Ezra has no summoners though. Not sure if you can play off that. Also, one thing I would suggest as well is if you... I'm not sure where you put this ward. Is this your ward here? But I'd recommend when you were in this brush and as soon as you saw them coming through here... I think if you just left a ward in this brush here, that would have been pretty hand handy for your team as well to better see um, this blue buff more clearly. It does look like you're trying to make a steel play on it though. I think your team can pile on here quite nicely. Yeah, Lisa's actually managed to get her um, does uh, manage to get her blue buff. One thing I will note there is that you actually in front there with the Mazahar shield and you tried to dodge the Morgana binding where the Q from the Morgana would have just disappeared. Okay, so you're coming into this landing phase with the enemy having summoners down and also their jungle is low HP and the Morgana has taken a little bit of damage here as well. So I don't know if Aurelia can actually do red buff with this amount of low HP. I would actually encourage the at least to jungle invade here, maybe even jungle invade for the red. But let's see. I think you're gonna have to try and like face tank like the Qs in front of the Ez. Like if this Morgana tries to come around to the side here and and does a uh, binding, you need to be in front of the Ezra to try and block it. Maybe the same as well with the Misfortune Q as well. If you can like see it happening. Doing decent harassment onto the Morgana here, but that Q is chunking down your mana like crazy. What's the cost on that? 80 mana? 80 mana per cast. That's not a friendly cast at all. Yeah, I'm just going to be straight up honest. This Malzahar pick is straight up garbage. <laughs> the main problem with, with the Malzahar is that it's very, very similar to, to Cho'Gath. I once tried out Cho'Gath uh, as a support in lane. And uh, the main issue he has is that the mana costs are really, really bad. Yeah. We get to the pause then. All right, where were we? We were talking about Cho'Gath. 
Okay, so the Cho'Gaff um, pick that, yeah, the mana costs are way too high and they're seeing it a lot right now in the Mazaha pick right here. The everything in terms of the mana costs are pretty brutal for you here. You haven't got cookies either, so if you're taking something with this amount of brutal mana regen, you need to kind of go cookies here. To be on all honesty, you need to go cookies. It's the only way you're going to be able to like even consider staying in lane here for at all. Um, so I'd really advise you to take cookies this because you're honestly not really doing much here. It's great that you're consistently landing the skill shots, but honestly, you're doing nothing here. Maybe coin for mana regen. I don't think you can. I'm not a Malzahar anyway. I mean, the coins would in theory help a tiny bit, but I don't know. I just don't like the pick anyway. I'm trying to keep like an open mind about it, but standing around Oom the entire time, I guess you're not really getting the gold stacks either. And. Ezra's, I know he's behind anyway, but this is basically a, a 2v1 lane for him. You could use E to regen mana of the minions if you AD carry last hits properly, but... Especially low level Malzaha with the E with the Malfuric Visions. It's extremely difficult to even get like consistent chain of kills going anyway. And the cost of E anyway is 70 mana, and you're only regening 13 per. It's not even worth it to do E on the minions. Even for that reason. Yeah. Maybe once you buy Frostfang. And maybe something else. Maybe. This mana regen is really, really bad. Like in theory, you should have had a second cookie about now, which would give you a little bit more mana regen here as well. Yeah, there's nothing else you can really do apart from auto attacks. <laughs> it's actually quite a little bit depressing to watch. Um, there's no point in you even moving to here this, to this point because you have no mana. And I notice you're putting points in E more so than anything else. Wouldn't Q be better? I'm gonna actually have to, because this is such an unusual pick. I'm gonna have to wiki the 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 actual fit benefits of upgrading Q over E. So. If you put points in Q, the silence duration goes up by 0.25 per point. I think that alone is enough justification for it anyway. If you put points in E, the magic damage actually only increases by 35. Which is the same as the Q. So you should be maxing Q first. You shouldn't be maxing E, you should be maxing Q first. Also, it, the mana cost of Q stays the same per level as well. But if you put points in E, it also increases the mana cost of the E as well. So it's going to give you even more, more trouble during the laning phase as well and through mid game as well. The only good thing about putting points in E is it reduces the cooldown of it. But honestly, it's not worth that at all. You should probably just go Q, have the 2 second silence duration level 9, that would be pretty decent. Just have your E one point so that the Void Swarm, your W, focuses a target better. And like... Yeah, and then then I guess you would want to do Q and then E and then W last, I would assume. I would assume. I'm not sure that the exact benefits of putting points in W, it seems to be pets do slightly more damage and last slightly longer. But to me, from the numbers that I'm seeing there, it doesn't seem worth it. So you should be doing Q, then E, and then W. 
Yeah. So I don't like your build as well. Science can be potentially quite strong. Um, it's just, yeah, this will not work in high or low at all. So if you are determined to consistently carry on with this, this build, you, you're going to have to think about cookies. You're going to have to think about maxing Q first. And honestly, think about playing something else if I'm just going to be brutally honest. Do you not have mana flow? I wish I could check. I'm going to have to check um, after the game and see what exact runes you have. So you are... Okay, well, I guess the main thing here we're waiting for is for you to hit level 6. I guess this is going to be like the pinnacle moment of Malzahar support is you hitting level 6. Pets did a relatively decent amount of damage there with the E. And now you got your jungler coming down here as well. Very slow to react, but by the time your Elise is here, if there's a ward in this brush, she's going to get seen. So as soon as Elise is there, you need to be moving down straight away. You're nowhere near for this fight. You have flash and ignite, but... I think what you can do here is that if they stay... I think you need to prioritize and stopping them recalling here. At least it's keeping them busy. You you should be here, right? You should be standing here and helping helping pincer this in. You have flash and ignite, and you have um, enough mana to do a E and a Q, 160 mana. So you can do an E and a Q here. Uh, so you should be standing around about here. You should be just, you could either do one or two things here. You could dive in theory. Riskier, you if you're more experienced mechanically, you could pull this off quite nicely. The alternative is, is that you wait for Ezreal to push in the wave, and also the added benefit of you standing here as well. Basically, it keeps the enemy minions at this point here. So that allows your minions time to get down here, down to this position here. So it, it gets your wave uh, to the tower quicker, so that you can tower dive quicker. Yeah, it's a shame there's like no incentive for you to, to be in this situation here at all, when these two guys are super, super low HP. That could have easily been at, at least one kill. I think you were trying to get XP for level 6 here, but it's not worth it. I think you're focusing too much on level 6 here. Um, you are going to have to try and make a play here. I think doing Yasuo here is the right decision here. Oh boy. Yeah, you got to unload everything. It wasn't even worth the risk there. You should have just ignited the the answer as soon as you ignited that. And also you, if you do it properly as well, you can do a Q and then an R instantly kind of thing as well. And Q up the, key, the the R from the Q. That would have been a much nicer nicer play. Because then even if the mouse heart, uh, sorry, even if the Yasuo then dodged your Q, um, like he did eventually anyway, um, you would then be able to keep them in the same position as you did anyway. So yeah, uh, you should have just made sure that the Asuo what should have died like straight away. Okay. So you got CDR boots. I guess you're thinking like you need as much CDR as possible for your ulti. I guess what is the cooldown on Malzahar ulti at this stage? One hundred and six seconds. It's huge, but it is a big ult. Wait, why didn't you should have at least like eat the MF there just to get rid of a strut there as well? That would have been quite nice just for, for that. Respect the binding here. Um, there's nothing to play for here. You have. No ignite, no ulti. The only thing you can really do as a Mazahar in a situation is just harass. Um, even doing this is super greedy because the distance between you and Ezreal is massive and the distance between you and minions to be safe from a binding is massive as well. Um, I think you should have realized at this point that you're being way too o overconfident here and you were like, noticing that you were running away. You should have just flashed away from this, this binding. This was... Um, 
very unnecessary. I'm not sure what kind of play that you're going off from there, but you're. St I think. <laughs> You're going to have to focus more about poking rather than harder gauging, especially without your ulti. There's no play to be made there, do you know what I mean? As as ult wave clear this wave, it'd be worth dumping an E maybe on the casting minions here. Just to clear out this wave a little bit quicker. Okay, that's a good ult onto the MF. If Ezra had vaulted there to follow up, that could have been a little bit more interesting. But the thing is though, like... You're using your E to, to poke harass the, the Morgana there. Like, if the Ezra did ult and you did have your E ready for, for there for the, the MF, that would have been like a kill, I think. Maybe. Would have been close. Nice little intention there, but it doesn't mean that you can't make another play now for another minute and, and a half because your ult is now on cooldown. And the main and the main spell you're poking with here as well is your Q, and it's only a one point. At this point, your Q should be doing 175 damage base, but at the moment it's doing 70, and it also would be a much longer science as well. It would be 1.75 science at this point as well. So you're missing out on a lot of the pain points in Q, to be honest. It's the main thing that you're using to try and spam spells onto them. Okay, so you have 35 seconds until your ult's ready. Ezra's got virtually no HP. You know what? I think... <clears throat> After the first recall, you've actually consistently been adding enough Qs. I was just wondering if you actually would be a, like considerably stronger. Not just a little bit, considerably stronger with points in Q here. Because you probably landed like five, five to six Qs, sometimes double. And if you're doing 100 extra damage from base... Like, that's an extra six. That's like an extra like, about six hundred plus damage there. So, just from harassment in lane. I I think you could have made this work with points in Q. One hundred percent. Because they're actually catching a lot of Qs. The Q range is quite is quite generous. I think if you just uh, play around with the build path, like towards the mana regen and laning phase to get you going through to that first buy and help you out a little bit in the second buy, buy as well, I think your mana issues would be um, a lot better and your damage in, in laning phase would be a lot more um, sustainable as well. Okay, you have ulti ready. Yeah, the, pro the problem with this is is that you shouldn't even be here in the first place. So this Elise has been mega caught out anyway in the first place. Like, at this point, you can see the MF is here. It's already 3v1 against the Elise here. She is very, very, very likely to die. Um, I don't know if you already know, but like her flash was, was down anyway. And the Vega's nowhere near here. Like, here straight away is a big nope. You don't even want to go into the situation at all. The only thing you can do is... Um, Turn around, put a ward in this brush here, and just just walk away from the situation um, completely. Secondly, you should have bought a Frostfang um, after buying. And did you buy a control ward when you were in the shop? No, you did not. You should be buying a couple of control wards. So you needed to buy oracles and a control ward as well from that buy. I'm assuming you die here. That's a good Vega cage. But that gets Vega killed as well. So you trying to join in in this Fiesta got the Vega killed as well. I know it wasn't your fault that... <laughs> oh, and then Ezra died as well. So, <laughs> like, I know the initial thing wasn't your fault of the Elise, but you gotta know when to not participate in the fight. Um, basically, the Elise died, you just joined in dying one by one, and then the Vega came in, and then the Ezra came in. So... Yeah. Un unnecessary. You gotta know when 
a fight's nowhere near going to be win, uh, win it won, and then you got to just leave it. Just leave, let them die. It's better that they get 300 gold for the Elise rather than, you know, you likely giving away uh, another 300 plus maybe some of as well. Okay, you're rotating up to top side to try and defend us because of the tier 2 push in here. You have flash, but no ultimate. It's not a lot you can do here. Good thing, got cage. Okay. <clears throat> I'm assuming you're just going to take all of this. You should take the next wave as well. You should really just take the second wave here and just push it back towards their side of the base, the, the map. Because what's going to happen here with this wave is, is that your minions are slow pushing here. So, but by the time this wave hits to this top tower here, it's going to give the enemy a massive wave. And it's also going to deny your team like CS. This wave, this these six, seven minions here should have been pushed in to just help reset the wave, the, the entire lane phase situation here bit better here as well. That makes sense. Okay, so you have your ult back up again now. It does look like you're trying to build a Zonyas. I can kind of understand that. They are pretty much full physical. I mean, I think if you're going to play Mazaha support, it's all about catching one or two people out, right? Um, I think Twin Shadows might be something to consider. Or even a Shredius, the Twin Shadows or Shredius could work. Just to try and emphasize on catching out one person. Please don't ult this. Okay, if you, you can ult the Yasuo yeah, straight away here. You're probably going to have to flash to this side here. Super close. You didn't have to use your flash though, but that was super close. Also, MF could have killed you though with her ulti actually. Yeah, you technically should have died twice there. But, just something to bear in mind. Alright, I need to start watching this because you're not involved in this fight. Okay, you're building towards... Yeah, you are building towards Zonya's. I can kind of understand it, but at the same time, I think you need to be more prioritizing about catching people out. I think once you've done your ulti, to catch one person out, I think that's your job done. I don't think you're there for much after that. Um. So, yeah. Once again, you're not buying control wards. You still haven't changed your trinket as well. In 20 minute game, you haven't changed your trinkets. It's not good enough. Uh, also, ideally, you need to have a ward in the middle of the lane here to see lane rotations and see where this Yasuo is rotating to. Um, there's no emphasis from you that I gather to even consider doing any objective at all. So there's, there's literally no macro here. It's just you're just reacting to what the enemy are doing and taking CS whenever you can. There's like no macro reaction here at all. There's, there's no macro decision I can see that you're doing here. Easy kill there. Don't know, do you have wards charges on this? This isn't telling me properly if you have ward charges on this. I'm assuming you don't. If you were to have ward charges on this, you might want to put one or two wards down just to Keep an eye on the enemy and the rotation still. That's where your ult is going to come in useful, just to lock down the ass way. As soon as he buys the QSS though, which he should have probably done instead of buying a Hex Drinker, that's when you probably will start finding issues with the Mazaha. So far, it's working out on the Yasuo because he isn't buying a QSS. And also, you're lucky in the sense that the Solanas have been holding off mid-game 
generally pretty well, to be honest. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Did I just see that properly? So you still haven't changed your, um, your drink yet. You've got to check brushes for control wards. So contr enemy control ward right there. So you're going to buy now. You bought your Zonyas. You still didn't buy a control ward and you still didn't change your trinket. It's now 21 minutes into the game. It's a shame your silence misses there. Wouldn't have been enough there though. Your ult's about to come up now. And you have flash ignite. I can see you can... Just get ready. If they do keep sieging down mid, I think you're going to need to do a quick reaction play on to flash onto one of them. And Vega should be able to follow up as long as he doesn't waste his cage. I mean, the right intention was there. MF was just also at the right time, at the right place at the right time. It does slow in that push there though, but you also lost Vega, which is qu quite crucial. Okay, you bought two control wards now and you finally changed your trinket. <laughs> Got there in the end. Okay, how long is your ulti? 33 seconds. So there isn't much, much you can do here. You should be trying to harass me if you can. It's a decent Q. Once again, you... Okay, so in this situation here, you're pushing down. Um, okay, let's just toggle the fog of war for red. Okay, so you are pushing down mid lane with your team. You've got three wards and a, two control wards here. Instead of trying to focus down or constantly just trying to harass here, especially when they're this far back, your flanks need to be better covered, basically. So, if I were you, there's a couple of ward placements here that you can do. You can put a ward here. This is the easiest one you can do. You can just blindly just put a ward here in this brush and then back off. I personally probably would do that. I'd probably ward there and then I'd get... Um, I'd then swing back over here and get this flank covered as well. Now, you... Because the Drake is up and you probably want to see them rotating from here to Drake. Getting in this brush and getting a ward here would be pretty useful. To be able to see them coming over if you were to make a play onto Drake. And then I would personally would maybe stay here a tiny bit longer after that. Just do to harass on the next wave. And if nothing happens after the wave is pushed in a little bit. Get some more vision around the Drake. Maybe a control in, in the Drake here. And you could um, maybe also put your last ward in this brush here if you felt safe to. You could probably Q face check it to get vision. And then that will give you a decent amount of vision to see on the dragon. But there should be a little bit more emphasis here to um, try and do the dragon here. Because the enemy are getting pretty low on HP. Morgana's no mana. And she's 60% HP. MF is on 75%. Shen's on 25%. So there should be more emphasis from your team to make a play to cause a fight. There are 5 mid though and Poppy is taking down bot side. But basically, the idea is you want to set up a play for your team to be able to do um, soon. This, this, this should be, in theory, a really good fight for you because you're, they're pretty low on HP. Adequate Zonyas. Okay. Poppy, in the meantime, took tier 2 bot. Uh, tier 1 bot, sorry. And now you've got um, a little bit of time. I think what you're doing here is okay. I think I know what you're going to do. You're going to push in this wave, but I'm bribed that you're going to recall. After you push in this. Oh, I think you're thinking about it. You should, um... You've got one ward, and you've still got these two control wards left. Like, if you're standing here, I would, you'd go over here and ward this brush here, and then probably put a control ward here, just to have your entrances covered here, for when you want to come down for this Mountain Drake now. Alright, let's keep seeing how it goes. But there's no emphasis on doing objective from you at all. Okay, your Q missed. Your ulti's up. You haven't got flash though. 
You have no idea if they're doing Drake or not. I think they're stealth taking it. But you weren't to know that because you haven't got wards there. This is the problem. This is what I suggested with the build earlier. Like your Mausaha and your, your goal is to try and catch one person out. If you have a Twin Shadows or a Shridius here, this would be able to enable you to catch out like these little fights a lot more easier. I don't think you're even going to be able to do anything this team fight. Right, what you need to do here is just keep pushing in the lane and push down to tier 2 bot. We've got plenty of kills here. This is great. You need to push in now and get tier 2. No, oh, no, 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 no. That... <laughs> Things towards Baron is not the best idea. She could easily get like tier 3 here. Okay. I don't know who pinged it. I'm assuming it was your jungle and you're following the call. Um, okay, so you take Baron to get towers. If you can take towers, then you don't need the Baron. If that makes sense. Like, if you can get the towers, like, now, take them now while it's actually safe to do so. Because if you, if, even if you do get the Baron safely, doing that Baron push in to get towers isn't necessarily safe. Um, I prefer what the Poppy and the Vega are trying to do here, to be honest. But it looks like you might actually get both. It's going to be close though. I wonder if the Asu is going to clean up here. It's going to happen, isn't it? You can, might lose your jungler here. You're going to... You've got Zonius here. That Yasu ulti could have been a lot worse. Yasu is still doing it though. You're going to die the Baron. Yeah, you're standing too close to the Baron there. So it's hard to you there instead of Yasu. Actually, Yasu may have died there actually if you didn't go into the melee range of the Baron there. <sighs> you just got yassoed. But yeah, here, Baron targets the nearest person here. So right here, because you got no mana anyway, you probably just want to like... You got flash as well, actually. Yeah, if you had, if you weren't in this pit here, if you had like maybe flashed over to this situation here or walked over to here, uh, Baron would be hitting the Yasuo here instead. So, yeah. Uh, I think... I don't know. Would have Yasuo have died there? Who knows? Yeah, Yasuo would have died there. He's on 7 HP there. Yeah, that's a shame. You wouldn't have got Baron though, but... I think you all would have survived. Yeah. Definitely a bad call. Especially that when you kill four of their, their team members as well. I don't know who called it, but we'll go for it again. If you kill four of the enemy team down on bot side, getting all your team all the way over from here to here is incredibly difficult. It takes such a long time to walk from here to here. And then you've got to do Baron, which takes forever anyway. Whereas you had a minion wave here anyway. You could have easily have taken a tier three here. Easily, and they, they could have walked in one by one as well. And if they kept doing that, walking in one by one, like the Yasuo, like for example, kind of did there, as, like on top side, like you would have had a 5v, like two, and you, if you killed two of them, then you would have got the in here, but then you would have recalled and you would have set up Baron for free, and you would just keep snowboarding like that. So, yeah. I think we'll go and have a look at one more play here. We'll have a look at one more of the uh, next fights that involve you and then I think I need to summarize it. Okay, at least there's a little bit more urgency about setting up the Baron now and you do have decent vision around here now. This is much better vision around an objective. This is the best vision I've seen or game from your team. I don't think you can pull it though. I think you need to do some sort of like bait in with the... Let P Poppy needs to be bot side with TP. She should be split pushing bot side and then TPing into the fight coming up. And you need to basically make a trap. 
like you are now. Like, this is perfect play. Mazahar gets instantly altered. That's two. Right now, you need to start Baron. You need to start Baron straight away here. Okay, the ch this chase is fine if you're able to follow up on it. Um, okay. Because you do have a decent minion wave here, it is entirely possible you could go for this tier 3 actually. You can go for this tier 3. I think you're the one here that's been spam pinging Baron here. But actually, you've got one, two, three, four. Your, yeah, your entire team is here and actually has a minion wave with a cannon here. There's a lot of minions coming down. You could actually, and you've got three of the enemy team dead. The only people that are alive are the Shen and Morgana. You can actually get inhib here. You can actually get to inhib here. Um, yeah. You're overemphasizing on the Baron. I don't know who's spam pinging this. It's not saying up in the chat log. But once again, you should be down here. Th this tower is free. This tower is absolutely free here. Once again, only Poppy and Vega seem to see the macro play here. All right, I'm assuming this time you do get Baron. John gonna die him. Are you all gonna lose Baron? Let's pop you get away. So, so you get Baron, but you, nobody gets the buff. They get to have a decent push in here now, onto the inhib. Good, Vega Cage. You're holding a bot side, I, I, I guess that's fine. There needs to be urgency about taking this Inferno Drake now because that will scale really, really nicely with the Vega. Okay, it's good to see that there's some more urgency about your macro play here. It's nice that you didn't get interrupted there because of your spell shield. Alright, again, Inferno Drake. I'm actually kind of curious to see where it all goes wrong now because Vega's actually been doing really, really well. Once again, like the lack of um, speed to help in these fights is a real problem, I'm noticing. There's nothing else really you can do right now. So, wait. Before we get into anything else, I've just noticed your item build. You went Merlinomicon. There is nothing on that team that you need Morano for. I would have liked to see you get like a Rylize maybe to slow them down so that so they can't get away or go towards like the Twin Shadows option that we were talking about earlier. Um, I'm not sure I like the Morano here. I don't think you're here to do damage. You're not. Uh, yeah, your Malzahar pick is not is not here to do damage, unless you get super ahead earlier. Um, I guess. If that doesn't happen, then you need to be more of like a utility mage, focusing more about CCing and catching up to people and catching up that one special target kind of thing. I think, um, I don't like your build. Yeah, just push in as many as you get the tower. Okay, you have your ulti ready now. Don't go in the brush by yourself though. You need to stay with your team. Don't try and be the hero and make solo plays like this. I think you're gonna get caught out, aren't you here? A cheeky play. I think that was unnecessary though. You didn't need to put yourself in that situation anyway. Yeah, I'm just going to summarize it. You guys do lose this game, don't you? There's a Baron fight. I want to let's watch the Baron fight quickly. So you get mid in here. 
Or dragon spawning. There's a elder drake spawning. Okay, I, you shouldn't put a normal ward there. That should like be straight up controlled there already, but there's a team fight going on on the mid lane anyway, and you've got two people dead. You can't actually do anything here. You need to um think you are gonna have to try and help assist this poppy though. You don't have your ulti up here. I don't think you can stay like properly in this fight though. Like it's more of like you're kiting off. Once the game like a twin shadows or a Rylas would be nice, you've gone into void stuff now. I honestly don't believe you need to be here to do damage. Vagar's doing a ridiculous amount of damage at the moment already, and Ezra's not catching up in the damage portion of the fight as well. You don't need void stuff, you don't need Morello. You need more utility here. So the enemy from that fight of the I guess you guys overextended for the Um So they get Elder and Baron. Yeah, I'm just gonna pause it here. Okay. I think we've gone through a lot of things here that we can do to help improve your Mouser Heart support. Wherever Mouser Heart support is viable support is a completely different question. But I won't go into it. Control wards and changing your trinket needs to happen a lot sooner. Um, 20 minutes is not good enough for that. So bear that in mind. There was honestly like extremely like little macro coming from you at all. You were just like making reactionary plays all the time. There was like no setup, no anticipation of what their enemy is going to do. No preemptive vision. It was just like if they did something, you would react to it and that would be it. There's like no control wards set in the, up in the brushes anyway to prevent like vision from the enemy. Uh, there was like no vision to cover your flanks at all. It was really, 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 really poor macro. I want you to think about your leveling build as well. I believe that you're not getting any benefit from your E. And at the very least, I feel you should be putting like at least three points in Q. Because that's like in laning phase, that's all you're doing is, is doing Q. You're doing the occasional E. And um, there's many Q spam. You've got some massive mana issues as well with mouse hard support in lane. I would advise you to go cookies. And also I want you to get out the mindset that you need to be the person carrying and doing the da most damage this game. Because like, unless you're ahead at that laning phase... I don't see Malzahar doing enough damage to be able to carry in any situation here. So I would like you to think more towards the things like the Shrewdias or the Twin Shadows. Also those things give you movement speed as well with the Aether Wisp as well. So that's going to help you engage in any way, passively anyway, with the movement speed. CDR boots I can see are okay. Maybe it might want to explore maybe mobility boots just to get around really, really quickly and just do like a very quick ulti. But I mean... CDR boots in my opinion are fine just to get your flash record in a, a little bit sooner as well. Um, so yeah, item build, level build, macro need to be adjusted in my opinion. Um, and, and you need to get out the mindset that you're the one that needs to make the big plays. You're, you're, it's kind of like... You're tunnel visioning too much for trying to be the person to make make the plays. Whereas, in my opinion, if you're Malzahar, you're setting up other people to get the kills. Um, so you should be more focused about setting people up rather than focusing on getting all the kills for yourself. Right? Like you're like like the actual carry. Do you know what I mean? Um, I think your your mana costs are way too high, and the damage is too low to be able to effectively carry the laney phase like a Zyra or a brand so if you try and get out of the mindset of that you need to like carry then i think you'll probably see a lot of improvement here as well i was trying to think of anything else like, i mean maybe maybe you, you you know what you know what what would might work might be worth exploring is a uh, glacial augment or mouse heart support or summon a shard Glacial Augment, if you go towards like, the Twin Shadows, that's going to slow him down a crud ton. And it means you're going to be in ult range a lot easier as well. Alternatively, you could go Summoner Shard as well to get the TP to like maybe gank topside. Or to get back into lane to gank your own lane. And you can then also pick up a, maybe a Ghost and an Exhaust as well to help catch up as well. So there's a couple of uh, things to explore there. I don't think Arcane Comet is worth it. 
the amount of damage that Arcane Comet's probably giving you this game is probably being like laughable. So definitely explore Glacial Augment in my opinion. I think that could work out like probably the best out of the two in terms of like catching someone out. But Book could also work too for Ghosts as well for a couple of situations. TP could always be quite nice. Um, Book is kind of clunky to use though. So you do need some experience in being able to use Book but it might pay off in the long run. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this coaching session. Um, hopefully with these tweaks we can maybe make Malzahar support viable. But um, I think if you are going to play off-meta champions, you need to think about more about what you're doing and more about your role rather than taking something off-meta that does damage and think, okay, I'm going to, you're now going to pick this champion to carry. It just doesn't work like that in the support role. You usually don't generate enough gold unless you're getting severely like fed in lane and getting all the kills. You lose too much m money from not being able to get CS. So, yeah. Okay. Right. Hope you guys enjoyed the coaching session. Got more stuff like that on my YouTube channel as well. So feel free to check that out as well.